I'm Hana. I'm 21 this year. Um, I would say that I'm firstly a full-time student. So I'm currently a second year human resource management student in SUSS. Hi, I'm Sue Ann. I'm 21 this year. Currently, I'm still a student. And I'm studying uh, economics in NUS. Yeah, I'm Timothy. I'm a year four sociology student at NTU. Yeah, I'm actually my final year and I'm about to graduate in this coming May. Elsie, I'm 22 years old this year and I'm a psychology and sociology student. Oh, my thoughts on generation poverty is that, you know, it's very difficult to actually solve because that is essentially what it is, right? Generational poverty. It's something that has been around for generations. It's been going on. And, you know, of course, it's a very big problem even nowadays, even like in, you know, like first, first world countries, you know. Yeah, so it's, it's a very big problem. It's very difficult to solve overnight. And yeah, I, I think that, you know, it's something that requires many small steps in, you know, taking towards it to solve the bigger issue because it's a systemic thing. It's essentially... Uh a poverty cycle that's entrenched in uh within within a family for generations and on. Um and in that case it's kind of like stuck with them. Um so definitely because it's kind of naturally occurring and deeply entrenched, it's quite hard for them to get out of it. Uh for anyone who's stuck in that kind of a situation to get out of it without external help most of the time. Um and usually they, they end up like that because of the circumstances, right? So either their living conditions or um, just a limit, limited exposure to opportunities that can help them get out of it. Um, so it is quite an unfortunate place to be in. And um, I, I guess that's kind of why it, it stays as a generational problem for most people. Mm. Yeah. I think this time around, like the speakers were really, like, I really enjoyed listening to like each and every sharing. I think that this team, right, the focus was on education. So mm -hmm. I think as discussed by the speakers, um, although education might not be the one, one answer to eradicating poverty, but I think it opened doors to like, a lot of valuable resources that was brought up, like friendships or like, mm -hmm. I know, knowledge as a whole. Lah. So I think, yeah, and I think education, like the interaction you get from being educated and meeting new people, I think it gives you the opportunities to like, you know, like even if you fail, you can always like bounce back. So I think life, life skills and like soft skills that, yeah, that comes along with education helps the individuals go a long way. I think something new I learned is that like it's amazing how the nonprofit organizations are able to like secure an internship for the for their students, especially the the one in Malaysia. And then um, from there, they're able to like rise up, like where she shared a story about how this, um, one of her students was, um, was doing, was, was an intern for a company and eventually he was recruited by a very big firm. Yeah, I think that's something new that I've learned because like you don't really hear such things of like companies trying to recruit um, interns from like, like how to say, from a bit more like lower income because they don't believe that they have the same abilities or same great education that like those from like middle income and up receive. I, I would say that uh, especially through the, the speaker sharing, I, I learned a little bit more about the, the real situation in, in some of our mm. neighboring countries. Uh, I think previously prior to the session, my understanding of generational poverty was very definition based and it's always like, oh, okay, I know it's happening, but I, I never really internalized it because I, I didn't have the chance to speak to anyone who's um, first, firstly been through that kind of a, a life or situation or even someone who's worked with people who are going through that so mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest takeaways is that um, education is one of the most powerful uh, tools that actually mm -hmm. uh, or rather engines of empowerment um, that has helped a lot of the, the children and eventually progress out of the situation and of course, uplifting their family along with it. Um, so it was, it was quite rewarding to hear of uh, a few of the speakers actually talking about different mm. uh, initiatives in the different countries where um, they approach students from different age groups, right? There's some mm. of them who approach them from like the preschool level all the way up to the primary school level. Um, and and that's, that's quite reassuring that um, these things are being done to, to help in 
uh, these uh, environments and neighborhoods. Okay, I don't think I have a solution on how anyone can alleviate generational poverty. Uh, I think like like was mentioned earlier, it's quite a complex problem and uh, it's multifaceted. So there's just no one set way to do, so, no one set solution for sure. But I guess mm. like one start is uh, for those of us who are ignorant to first acknowledge that we are ignorant and then you know, mm. sign up for events that uh, have, for example, like this community huddle where the central theme is actually on generational poverty or maybe even poverty in general, just to understand a little bit more about what are some of the issues and uh, certain gaps, right? So um, after understanding all of that, we then only we can find out about um, where we can possibly plug the gaps. Like for example, for myself, I may be a student who's also working, but I, I still wouldn't consider myself having the uh, having sufficient finance, uh, disposable income to, to contribute financially. So for me personally, the least I could do is just to sign up for more events like this um, to get a better understanding of what the issue is like and um, from there on possibly meet like-minded people and come up with a solution together that hopefully is a sustainable one that can help more people from larger groups or less rich groups. Well, um, I don't think there is any single one direct answer to solving generational poverty. Yeah, because it's really a very big thing in itself and, and there's no, yeah, yeah, so so I, I currently don't have any direct answer to it, but I believe that, you know, I can take many, many different small steps to working towards it. For example, like, like you know, like how Michael Schaefer talked about him teaching his people how to, you know, weave the thing and, and what, right? Same thing, you know, you could be a mentor to the other people in your life. It doesn't have to be rich people. But of course, we tend to be surrounded by people of the same social background as us, you know, middle class, stuff like that. So it's really up to us to, you know, reach out and, and provide these resources to the rest of them for a way, you know, just to just to equip them at least, if not with the knowledge, then at least with some of the skills so that they'll be able to climb up there and meet other people's expectations in this case. To educate myself so that I can so that I can gain more knowledge and like spread the right message across to like other people and get more people on involved and on board with helping out um people who are still stuck in the poverty cycle.